Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad of Zavdamer, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service at jbiztechvalley.com. You know, Rabbi, we have a very different type of show today. All right. You know, we never really talk, we talk about drugs and with the police uh, officials, law enforcement officials on here, but we never talk to the people behind the scenes. Well, today's guest is uh, Dr. Stuart Rosenblatt. He's the executive director of New Choices Recovery Center in Schenectady. So welcome to the program. Thank you. And Pleasure you're, to be here. You're really on the front line of, this, of, of abuse of drugs and alcohol and gambling. Uh, t tell us what you're seeing yeah. in your... In, well, tell us your, what your yeah. organization yeah. is. What, What's New Choices? What, what okay. are you there for? New Choices Recovery Center is a comprehensive... No, look at, we talk, like we're in our living room. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. New Choices Recovery Center is a comprehensive treatment program serving individuals with chemical dependency and other mental health challenges. Uh, we provide a array of services across a continuum of care. Uh, we operate a very busy uh, and productive outpatient clinic serving <coughs> individuals with full day rehabilitation services. We also operate an intensive outpatient service as well as outpatient, depending on where an individual is in their recovery and what their needs are. But is the patient, is this voluntary, like, hey, I'm in trouble, man, I'm an alcoholic, my life's going nowhere, I'll sign up, or sometimes I know court says, you know, you're a mess, I mean, they may not say those words, but you know, you're a mess with drugs, we caught you using drugs, you better get over to Dr. Rosenblatt's place and, you know. To That's an excellent point. In, in fact, the significant majority of our clients are mandated uh, by any number of entities, parole, probation, drug court, child and protective services, departments of social services, uh, parole, probation, it could be often a condition of their release that they participate in a substance abuse treatment program. Drug court, if you're not aware, offers an individual with felony and misdemeanor charges the option to enter into a rehabilitation program as an alternative to incarceration. So a significant percentage. We do serve a number of individuals who, through a variety of situations, come to us voluntarily. Do you do the actual sit down with some of the patients or are you more administrative? Uh, as a clinical psychologist, in as much as I serve as the executive director, I spend a good amount of time with clients. Uh, so they can see the top guy. I mean, you sit down. Absolutely. And yeah. We have a very open door. We're a small nonprofit, uh, but we uh, occupy a very important niche in the capital region and particularly in Schenectady County. No, I think it's important for the people to know that there's no ivory tower, that you're right there on the front lines. Does it ever get scary for you that here are these people as an alternative to incarceration, that they're coming to see you, no protection, you know, <laughs> does it scary sometimes? No, I think the scariest thing being in, in this line of business is the, the fear that a client who you're serving uh, will make a poor choice. Uh, that's particularly true in our community residential programs. We operate four community residences. How many people um, uh, are residing a, there? A total of 75. That's a lot. Yes, and we have three serving exclusively males, one serving exclusively females. And uh, there's always the inherent risk that someone will make a poor choice, relapse, uh, and overdose, and, and that's an ongoing concern that we have. Now, separating the men and the women has nothing to do with Orthodox Judaism, I guess. Just common it? sense. <laughs> well, they are together in the clinic during the day. Yeah, they work together. <laughs> you know, there, it's an interesting thing. One of my 10 jobs is I do go to prisons and visit the inmates, and they're supposed to be Jewish, but many others come in. So one of the statistics they say is that the, the people, the criminals that are in there, 60% are drug or drug related. I mean, they need drugs, so they go rob the store to get the few dollars to get their hit. And that's correct. But I mean, I just always was looking for something for, you know, I feel bad for them because even though they're supposed to be, um, you know, reconciled to society afterwards, you know, that's officially, but um, 
I always was looking for uh, programs like yourself. It's on one hand, 75 is a lot, but compared to how many drug-related crimes there are in New York State, it really, in a way, is small. Would you uh, be able to, if you had the funds and the, and the ability to uh, expand the program? Well, we have been expanding over the last couple of years. Uh, at the beginning of the year, OASIS, who, which is the state oversight agency. Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> they approached us to uh, assume responsibility for operating another clinic just further up State Street. A uh, year and a half ago, we were awarded uh, a, a very competitive grant to uh, develop what's called, it's part of the Medicaid redesign team that this, the state has been recommending to contain Medicaid costs. But we opened yet another permanent supported housing program. Excellent. Uh, we have a very large Shelter Plus Care permanent supported housing program uh, where we have close to 70 scatter site apartments, actually 80, uh, throughout Schenectady County where we subsidize the rent and provide case management supports. What's your budget? That's a good point. Overall and operating budget? Well, it's been increasing. In the yeah. four years that I've been there, it's uh, increased by, I think, about 150%. We're now, uh, again, a small yeah. provider. We're $5 million. How much operation? is that per, per patient, though? How much does it come out in general? I don't know, because most of, I never did that analysis, really? because our funding is comprised of, of multiple sources. The primary revenue source for our agency is Medicaid reimbursement. Most of our clients are Medicaid eligible and we're reimbursed. The residential programs are largely state funded. Those are funds we get directly from, they're not Medicaid eligible services because they're not primarily medical in nature. Whereas what we provide in the full day and clinic program is Medicaid eligible. Well, I just would uh, throw out, I know that it's per prisoner, it's uh, inmate at $60,000 right. plus costing New York State. So I would say that this would be number one more economical beneficial for New York State. And like I'm, of course, I mean, I care about New York State too. I mean, their money, but also I'm, you know, I have to deal with the inmates too and counsel them. And this is, I'm sure, benefiting the, the patient more than locking them up into a cell. There, there's, there's no, there's no question about the tremendous cost savings mm -hmm. in providing treatment as an alternative to being in prison. Not to mention the savings in human suffering, I mean, which one can calculate. So, Do you ever have like outbursts from the patients that, you know, you say, well, you know, we really should have more protection, you know, a plexiglass or something that, you know, I mean, you don't want to have a barrier, but you got to have safety for your employees also. It's something that we discuss, I mean, which is why, I mean, we're open from 8 in the morning till 8, 9 at night, and we always ensure that there's adequate staffing there to contend and with. And 9 o'clock at night down on that part of State Street is not always the safest time to go home, so I'm just saying. Well, we park nearby. Yeah, nearby, I mean, you're yeah. Up, <laughs> you're bringing up good points. And that's and, why I'm just trying to, you Yeah, know. but we're not a prison. I mean, we're right. actually trying to be an inviting uh, mm -hmm. organization where people can come in and feel what, what, safe. What would people watching this program be most surprised about that they really don't know about what goes on with addiction and people who are addicted to either drugs, alcohol, or gambling? Okay. I think what may or may not be so surprising is the magnitude and complexity of the issues that people are struggling with way beyond just the addiction. It's not just merely the drugs, it's the other aspects of their lives, both social issues with their families, uh, spiritually. Uh, the, the individuals we're serving are, you know, come to us with uh, you know, a host of challenges in mm -hmm. their life, separate and apart from the mere addiction. So we 
we aspire to serve people holistically and attend to all aspects of their lives. Our programming, our groups, our staff are seeking to address people in a comprehensive manner mm -hmm. and we do so within the organization and through linkages and referrals to other organizations as well. You know, when you say spiritual, that's my line because I'm the rabbi. Right. But I know Dr. Twersky, Abraham Twersky, who was one of the leaders of uh, in the alcoholism abuse. And, I mean, he really keeps himself sectarian. He doesn't proselyte right. and to become Jewish, even though he is a rabbi. But the idea is that I know Alcohol Anonymous, they're always looking for the superior being that someone of the Almighty to lift them out of their doldrums. I mean, th well, let me just say this. When I, we're actually, there's a prohibition. We can't actively subscribe to this 12 step model Why not? In, in a treatment program because it used to be many of the early on in the substance abuse world, most of the programs were grassroots programs. They actually arose out of the 12 step mm -hmm. uh, movement. And there were various individuals that objected to having to subscribe to the 12-step model, having to subscribe to giving themselves over to a higher power. So all we can do as a treatment provider, we can't mandate anybody to attend AA and NA meetings in as much as they're very helpful. We can encourage someone to attend self-help meetings outside new choices but no treatment program can sponsor a 12-step program as part of their treatment and recovery yes, trust I didn't know that. and what what are you seeing a trend towards where is the abuse uh, 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 trending these days well I mean as you probably see in the papers and you could see in the big advertising campaign that's been launched is just the ever increasing use of heroin and opioid painkillers and prescription drugs uh, that's been that's reaching what I would consider to be epidemic proportions uh, I think I read on Oasis's website uh, a little while ago that there's been as much as 150, 200 percent increase in the number of admissions for heroin and opioid. Why is that? Why do you think that well, is? Well, I think it has to do with, well, the whole couple of reasons. First of all, I mean, the availability of heroin, cheap heroin, is has increased dramatically, but also a gateway uh, one of the gateway mechanisms for people to get into heroin is abuse of prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the problem resides. Uh, prescription drugs, and we're talking about painkillers, we're talking about antidepressants, we're talking about tranquilizers, we're talking about stimulants. Uh, they're being, continue to be widely prescribed. Uh, often and people get hooked on them. They get hooked yeah. on them, and then when they're no longer available, uh, what have you, people will take to the streets and seek heroin. Uh, and you're seeing an increase of yes. customers or clients. That's correct. Okay, for that. That's correct. Okay, now, when with alcoholism, uh, they say that in the on the street they call it courage juice. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever heard that expression? No, I haven't. Because when you take enough scotch or you take enough right. whiskey, you know, you tend to want to do things that you normally wouldn't. It breaks down your inhibitions. That's correct. So uh, do you still see a lot of uh, I would say alcoholics uh, out there? Or very much so. Okay. I mean, that's a mainstay of the people we serve. People well, I remember when I, was in, when I was in fifth grade, I wrote a little book report about alcoholism. Is it an oh. addiction or a drug? Okay. And you know it was, you know it was both. both. Right. And exactly. I wrote about that, and the teacher not only gave me an A, but made me read it in front of the whole class, which I really didn't want to do. But, <laughs> but since I was ten years old, that was something that I was fo been focused on is alcoholism abuse, and you know I've been making. I mean, you know, the, the, one of the yeah. issues we have many times here, and there's a lot of politicians, Mark 
course, knows many of them. He brings them here. But the, it's a hot issue of legalizing marijuana. Correct. Oh. I mean, it's around the nation. I mean, I, I'd like to hear your view of it. I mean, and then I tell you, you know, of course, you know, you mean the, synagogue, <laughs> the Jewish view. I don't know if it's a Jewish view. I shouldn't say it's my view, and mm -hmm. maybe it's Jewish, maybe it's not. I mean, I have my personal views about things, but, you know, like I say, it's in our synagogue and we, in our temple, and we like two good Jews or three different opinions, so we have right. some heated <laughs> discussions. You know, amongst them. But first of all, let's hear what your opinion is. Well, I mean, is. obviously, it's a very controversial issue, but, you know, there's very clear cut evidence that, I mean, we serve a significant percentage of in individuals who smoke marijuana, and in addition, I mean, many individuals are what we would consider poly substance abusers. They use a variety of substances, but, uh, you know, Clearly, I mean, there is uh, evidence in the research literature suggests that marijuana as a medicine, uh, properly administered, you know, can be very helpful in treating a whole uh, slew of medical disorders for which Western medicine, you know, sometimes the side effects are worse than the, the well, ailments. So. I, just, I just think it should be administered the way morphine is administered at the end of life. I mean, you don't hear anyone really being addicted to morphine anymore, and mm -hmm. you know, but it's well, you're still there. Is, but uh, synthetic of morphine, of processing of morphine. Yeah, but I'm just saying that if they, if they do it in the hospital, if they, you know, if if it's done under doctor supervision, where they don't say, all right, take it home, where someone else could take advantage of it. Correct. I think, you know, so you're okay with medical marijuana? Eh, I got mixed emotions about it. But it's leaning towards okay? I mean, on the scale of one to a hundred, you're on the the, eh, the good yeah. side of 50%? I, I would say. Okay. I would say. People okay. say they'll legalize marijuana, and of course a few states have already done it, so Correct. it's quote unquote normal already. I mean, you have a few states in the United States. I'm totally against it because a little bit like like I said before, I see the downside of it. You know, people are hooked and they're addicted and ruins their lives. So maybe I'm a little scared because I see more than the guy in the street. You know, the regular person. Well, says, you have good oh, cause to be. You have good cause to be skeptical and and cautious. But that's what Mark reminded me. People, on the other hand, they'll counter me, and say, you know, how bad alcoholic is. You know, alcohol right. is, there's agree. so many alcohols, why don't you want to ban that? Which I don't, because I want to make Kiddush and <laughs> <Right>. wine <laughs> over here. So I don't really have a good answer to say, right. you know, to Neither answer the ban. Neither right. do I. So let me ask you this. I, you know, th there's a proposal to have a, a casino in Schenectady, City Correct. Schenectady. Are you gearing up for Gamblers Anonymous, or, or not Anonymous, but Gamblers Addiction? And, yes. And, a, and what are you doing to... Well, prepare yourself for this influx that you're going to have? There is a credential that one could acquire, and several of our clinicians are actually pursuing that credential to provide a bona fide protocol for serving people. We're already serving a number of individual. Gambling addictions often are accompanied by substance abuse. So again, when I was talking about the myriad of, of challenges that people who uh, seek treatment or who are mandated treatment bring to the agency, it, it can't be underestimated. So we're already serving a number of individuals with gambling problems, uh, not to mention the fact that they're gambling with their lives just by the mere you know, lifestyles mm -hmm. and choices that they've made. But interestingly enough, Within the legislation, and there will be four casinos, yeah. there is a certain amount of money that's being allocated for every slot machine. There's a certain amount of money that's going to be set aside to provide treatment and prevention services for gambling. So they, so they know it's already going to be a problem, and they're putting aside money well, to treat that. let me just tell you that. this. I mean, I guess... <clears throat> New York State is, in my opinion, grossly underfunded presently to provide an adequate amount of gambling treatment and prevention services. I mean, I think in stark contrast to other states. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, apparently within the legislation that uh, agrees to mm -hmm. set up four casinos, there is a certain percentage of revenues 
that are to be given over, I'm assuming, to OASIS. And that would and that's inadequate what you're saying. That well that set aside. influx well, I don't know what whether it's going to be adequate or not, but okay. it'll, I know what's currently funded. How much is currently funded? In New York State, for the entire state, I don't think it's much more than $2 million statewide. Mm -hmm. That's not too much. So, and do you get any of that? Place. Does any of that money come to your no. center? No. Generally speaking, the gambling, the money allocated for problem gambling has been cut over the years, and most of that money is not. I think it goes to prevention agencies. We're a treatment agency. Right, right, We're a right. licensed treatment agency. You're after they've already been addicted. That's correct. You know, they're trying to do prevention before That's you correct. become addicted. So. Right. Okay. It's the best way to, the best defense against addiction is never to start. It's an education That's uh, campaign, and basically. Schools, many counties have councils on, and on prevention. Uh, Mm -hmm. Saratoga does, Saratoga Schenectady, Warren Washington, and they work with youth primarily. They go into the schools and to educate the kids on uh, risks associated with substance abuse and gambling. So uh, have you been speaking out against this casino in Schenectady? Have you, are you staying neutral? <laughs> no, but I have been I participate in uh, a coalition of substance abuse providers of Northeast New York. I'm actually the president-elect uh, of that coalition, and we've been having discussions and meetings mm -hmm. lately on uh, the imminent increase in, in gambling. And we What was the name of the group again that you're Cosa Penny. Oh. So long name. So it's different from uh, Council on Addictions of New York State. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Because that know what was you're reading from. Well, yeah. No, there was uh, something on your website, a oh. link to. Um, that needs to be updated. Okay, but <coughs> no, it's a coalition of substance abuse providers of Northeast New York. Many regions of New York uh, have coalitions okay. of, you know, they have it in the mental health world, we have it in the substance abuse. You know, there was a meeting recently at, uh, in Albany, well, at, on Wolf Road, at a hotel on Wolf Road, where everyone was able to speak about their opinion, speak out regarding gambling, regarding the casinos. But the people in the street, I mean, it was just everyone for professional and was, yeah, was a town the hearing of sorts. Town hearing. Everyone and anyone who wanted to come, they could, they could comment. They were streaming it live. They were trying to get as many people as possible to come in there, and they were going to stay till everyone had their say. And I thought it was really terrific. But you know, it came with a lot of people. You know, the usual suspects. I would, you know, I didn't hear anyone talk about the addiction issue. Interesting. And it would have been nice to have you there to make them aware of Well, there the is the Council issue. on Problem on problem, problem Gambling. gambling. Yeah. Jim Maney, uh, and, I and Oasis have staff. Yeah. Well, uh, Oasis won't sorry. speak up because they're the governor's Correct. You know, the agency. So, <laughs> What is your staff? Uh, we haven't gotten into that. We said the budget. But uh, what are the qualifications? Are MSW, well, I we would have, assume? Well, we have what is considered to be a high caliber multidisciplinary staff uh, made up of licensed social workers, licensed mental health counselors, registered nurse, I'm a psychologist. Uh, we have CASACs, which are credentialed alcohol and substance abuse counselors. Uh, what else do we have? So yeah. we have a staffing pattern that's very similar to mm -hmm. what you would find in most psychiatric right. uh, clinics. I know that because for most of my career I was in the mental health world in New York City. So, and What would be that, if you can, it's hard to say the success rate. I mean, I know it's always hard to, I mean, well, what is it, one year down the line, five years down the line? Is there a high recidivism rate? Maybe that's a different way yeah, of asking the, the same question. Right well, yeah. I mean, if you consider substance abuse to be a chronic relapsing disorder, much like diabetes and asthma, 
I mean, it, it's, it's fair to say, I mean, we have substantial success mm -hmm. uh, with our clients, but we also, I mean, it's, uh, it may take many, many attempts. Uh, takes for a lot someone. of patience. Takes a lot of patience, patience for to, staff and, mm -hmm. and what have you. But and there is a fair uh, amount of, of recidivism. And, and you also have a drunk driver program. That's correct. And tell us about that and how well, that I evolved. Well, I mean, people who are uh, seeking to regain their licenses after a DWI or a DUI, uh, I mean, depending on what the infraction was, we offer, it's DOT, DMV approved, mm -hmm. uh, we offer a 12-week uh, course. People are required to come and uh, and they're taught by certified individuals, instructors that we retain. Uh, and after going through a 12-week program, depending on with what frequency, you know, they've, you know, gotten violations, they're able to regain their license. So that's a very valuable program. Yeah. For and one that most people might not know that you offer. That's true. You that's know, true. So. Although we're, again, one of the few places in our neck of the woods, we're one of the few providers of substance abuse services that provide community residential programs, mm -hmm. programs that are generally the halfway houses. People stay there for four to six months. Uh, we're one of the few places that sponsor permanent supported housing program accompanied by case management services. Mm -hmm. So there are some unique aspects of new choices. And, and, and ju just to let the audience know that between 1968 and 2006, there's been an evolution to become new choices recovery. Um, you know, with different names and it all sort of evolved well, into Well, our legal what, name so still remains the Alcoholism and Substance Abuse, Abuse Council of Schenectady Schen County. That's mm -hmm. our legal name, but uh, this is prior to my coming right. on board. No, no, they but sought to come up with a DBA and New Choices Recovery Center is as good as it's going to get. And it was chosen in the mid-2006. That's was, correct. You know, so it's relatively a new name. If That's you correct. Yeah, I mean, not eight years old or whatever, you know, so. It's a baby. I, it's a, you know, in the world of alcohol, in the world right. of addiction, yeah, it's a baby. <laughs> but Is that's, there a trend nationally to what you're doing? To me, I think you're doing the greatest thing, again, because, like, again, maybe because I have a skewed view that I see people in prison. I say, what are you doing in prison? Why don't you just get educated and help these people out just to lock them up? But to me, you're doing such a, an enormous service to the community, but can you talk about nationally a little bit? I mean, are there more and more trends of helping people instead of incarcerating them? Well, and you have I mean, two I, minutes to talk about it yeah. nationally. <laughs> okay. <So. laughs> I, but I, I mean, I think driven by a whole host of, of issues, primarily overcrowding in the prisons, uh, I mean, and the financial expense associated, you know, with incarcerating people. Uh, and also, depending on, I mean, there's been a lifting of some of the stiffer penalties uh, associated with, you know, drugs, you know, selling and possession. I mean, there were people in the old days put away for relatively minor offenses for extended sentences. The Rockefeller drug laws. That's correct, mm -hmm. which were repealed. Right. Uh, so, yes, there's, there's a need and a recognition that people should be given the opportunity to rehabilitate, to recover, to rejuvenate. And those are, I should say, you know, when we were talking earlier about the spiritual aspects of, I mean, I think it's fair to say, you know, whether it's the 12-step programs, AA, NA, uh, you know, most of them are sponsored in churches. I don't know of any synagogues that sponsor AA services. There's a but few of them. I but think yeah. steeped in the Jewish tradition is the concept of recovery and, and mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's just when you think about the Yom Kippur and what have you. So that's what we also try to, you know, 
reach out to people. Doctor, I think you really are doing the Jewish view. That's why you go down the Jewish view, because recovery and helping people instead of incarcerating them and punishing them, that really is the Jewish view. Thanks. You're doing great service to the community. Continue what you're doing. Not only continue, but grow more and more for help more and more people and do it all with good health. All the best of success, yes. Thank you.